Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how you guys how to set up your Gmail as push email. And push email is very, very beneficial because you'll get instant notification like a BlackBerry. You won't have to, uh, like even when you set up as IMAP or whatever um, through Gmail, which is how Gmail is usually set up, you're not going to get instant notification. And sometimes I would go like 40 minutes until 50 minutes. Sometimes an hour I would go in and then it would come in, even though I had push turned on and, and all that. So, and I had it set to the most... Uh, frequent intervals for retrieving email, um, it still didn't come in right away. So I set it up as uh, Exchange and it came instantly, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, this is how you do it. So you go into Settings. This is how you set up any, well, how you set up any uh, email account. Then go into, uh, and then first you go to Fetch New Data. You want to make sure Push is turned on. And then also, of course, you want to have the most recent, you know, the, more, the shortest time interval every 15 minutes. I'm surprised it's that long. It should be much less, like three minutes. But I'm sure they're looking into battery life. The more often it tries to fetch your email through, you know, the normal way, pop email, um, the more it's going to drain your battery. But anyway, push email is going to be on. Make sure you do that. And then you go into add account. And normally you click on Google Mail, but you don't want to do that because that, again, again that will set up as IMAP. And you're not going to get instant notification of your email like a BlackBerry. So that's why we're doing this is so you can get instant notification. Okay, so we're going to go to Microsoft Exchange and I'm going to type in your email. So type in your email. Make sure you type it in correctly. Uh, I normally don't type with my finger like this, so that's why I'm typing slow. All right. And then domain, forget domain. Leave it blank. Username, same deal. Well, you just typed in your email address. Password. I put in my password. Okay, and then description you want to change that. This is what it's gonna how it's gonna list. So I would just put your email address yet again. Otherwise, it's just gonna say exchange. And if you do more than one email address, you're not gonna go which one's which. Then you click next, and it's going to verify the information. If you have like wrong login information, then it should tell you. Um, and if it keeps on saying wrong password, then just you know go and reset the password if you have to. You might have just forgotten it, but it's it, it will be accurate. So it's just verifying right now. All right. So now it says exchange. So after it verifies, then you're gonna. It says server right here, so you want to put in the server m dot google dot com. Very easy. Google always always makes it very easy. Everything else is great. Next, it's going to verify the server. Now it's going to ask you which you want to uh, sync: your mail, your contacts, your calendar. I'm going to switch off contacts because otherwise it'll say, "Do you want to delete your contacts on your phone and replace them with your Gmail contacts?" Which I do not want to do. I use you know, of course, I have a Mac, so I use everything Mac. So anyway, uh, turn off. But also, if you are going to use these, make sure you have them set up on the web in gmail.com. Make sure you have them set up and activated and you're using them before you sync them. Okay, so I'm going to just have the mail sync. Click on Save. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then you can go back in. And you can see the mail is on, everything else is... Mail days to sync, three days. I usually like to have two weeks before I put no limit, but then, you know, I've had this account for years and I would bring in like years of email. It's just, I don't need that. So I put two weeks, but you can put whatever you want. And then go on account info and just confirm everything and we are good to go. So, 
Yeah, that's pretty much how me how you know how you set it up. And so I do have, I, I did look around at some other videos that showed how to do this, and there were some questions that were frequent that came up. So I'm just going to answer those. So again, why doesn't it uh, why doesn't it work with a normal G Gmail setup? Again, I answered that before because Gmail uses IMAP; it doesn't use push email, and you have to go through Microsoft mm. Exchange to have the push email set up. Um, second one is, well, I get push notifications when I get uh, an email, like when the phone is locked. Again, you're not going to get a push email notification like an SMS popping up. You're not going to, like if you click on, you're not going to get something like that. That's just because, again, push email and IMAP email, or push notifications and push email are completely different. Push just means you get it instantly. Um, but the notifications that the iPhone gives are separate from this email mm -hmm. setup that we just did. My phone keeps on vibrating because I'm getting an email. But anyway, so... Uh, the next question would be, if you want to uh, password protect your email on your iPhone, simply just set it up so that the screen automatically locks after like a minute and then you have to put in a password to, to get in. So the way you do that, you go into settings and then you go down to general. Let's go back to general. And then you go into, down it says auto lock. You want to set it so it says one minute and then go back and then password lock. And then you, uh, here, let's put my password real quick. And then in here it shows, you know, turn password off. That would say turn password on if you don't have it activated. And then you can change your password, require passcode. You want to require it immediately. Um, and then simple passcode, have that on. Voice dial is when you hold down the home button, it'll prompt, it'll say voice control, and it'll allow you to um, command stuff through, you know, just by voice activation. And... Uh, so it's going to allow you to do that if, if the screen is locked, if you have this on. Erase data, that's going to allow you to, if someone you know steals it or you misplace it and someone else picks it up, if they try to enter their the code and they fail 10 times, they'll just erase all the data. Um, but also if you have my if you have um, mobile me, then you can remotely erase your data if you lose it. So I mean, it's up to you if you want to have that on. I don't want to have it on. So let me just turn this off. Okay, so um, that answers that question, how to password protect your email. And if you're using an iPod Touch, you'll need, be, you'll need to be connected to a Wi-Fi, you know, a Wi-Fi network um, to access your, to do this, to get your email. You, because you're not going to have an iPhone data plan to use to get your email. So you're going to have to be at Starbucks or at home or wherever you're going to have an internet connection through Wi-Fi, wireless. All right, so again, the benefits of push email over IMAP is you get instant notification. Um, it still has the same thing as IMAP, whereas if you send an email on your iPhone, you'll see it on your webmail, and also any other you know computer that you have is set up for IMAP, you'll see the sent email on that. And then also when you read an email, you'll see it on, the other on your webmail and other computers that use IMAP. Um, and again, it also allows you to sync your, contact, your Gmail contacts and your Gmail calendar and your Gmail email, of course. Okay, so that is, uh, that is it.